Military shorts. Remember that he has 
nothing on us. He has nothing on us. The only power the enemy has in our lives is what we give him. The only time he can march into our camp and destroy our tent, our home, even our home in here, is when we tell him, come on in. Or when we aren't suited up for armor. Ephesians 6 tells us, this is all commercial for Ford. Ephesians 6 tells us that we're to stay suited up because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. My war is not with you. My war is not with them. My war is not with the city. My war is not with, y'all are not at war with me. They're not at war. We're at war with an unseen enemy who wants to rip us apart like a lion. But I want to tell you this, the enemy's got paper teeth. He cannot hurt us. When? When we say, I do to Jesus, because he already did. When we use those wedding words, I do, I commit to you, we enter into a covenant, an engagement, a, a, a wedding. We're going to go to a wedding feast when he comes to pick us up. When I said I do, I became eternal. Because I've been born first of water, spirits physically. Okay, we were all born the same way. Whether you were born naturally or you were born by cesarean, we all came from a little bubble of water that protected us as we grew. Then we've been born of water, then we have to be born of the Spirit. When we become born of the Spirit, we're only going to die in the flesh. I'm going to put this flesh off, and I'm going to get a glorified body. I've asked for pink hair. I don't know if I'll get it. Maybe. That'd be fun. I'd like it to get to this. But we get a glorified body. I will not die in the Spirit. I will only die in the flesh. This this tent will come off, and I and my soul and my spirit will go to be with Jesus. All right, so the action from the body is to be present with the Lord. We're going to be here, and then we're going to open our eyes, and we're going to be there for those that have been born again. Now, for those that have not been born again, the story's a little bit different. born once, born in the flesh, never born in the spirit, then you're going to die in the flesh, then you're going to die in the spirit. Um, many, many times in the Bible it talks about the second death. There'll be two feasts. And there's going to be two feasts. There's going to be a feast of those at the wedding, which is the church, and then there's going to be the feast of those that didn't say I do, and they will actually eat the dinner. They're just going to want her pink hair. Yeah, they're going to want my pink hair. <laughs> study it. See what brand of dye I use. Um, okay, so back to where we were. Huh? On fire for Jesus, that's right. I've always said that even on, even after I'm dead, people will be able to know I believe in Jesus because all my tattoos are Jesus tattoos. They tell my story. They tell my story of how Jesus transformed me and how Jesus saved me. Um, so back to back to being born again. So you're born again. You've been born of the flesh. If you're not born again, your flesh is going to die. And then your soul and spirit have to die. Humans do not go to hell and ride for all eternity. Hell, which is 
created for Satan and his minions. They're going to ride for all eternity. I'm excited about that. They have jacked with me long enough. Somebody can probably say amen on that. Um, tell me how hard it is to get clean and stay clean. Tell me how hard it is to walk the walk and talk the talk. The longer you do it, though, the easier it gets. So, you say, okay, well, what does that mean? That means for those that didn't say I do to Jesus, will get the opportunity to have honored the choice that they made. Let me debunk another myth. God doesn't send people to hell. My granddaughter asked me that two weeks ago. Why does God send people to hell? Well, he does. What he does is he honors their request not to spend eternity with him. What a dictator and a cruel God he would be if somebody doesn't like him for them to have to spend eternity with him. That'd be terrible. That'd be like having to live with your ex-wife or ex-husband forever. <laughs>
open eyes and ears to see in the spiritual realm, to hear words straight from heaven. Take the natural and make it supernatural. Speak to us today exactly what you want us to hear. And not only can we walk away changed, but we can change our lives and the generations to come. That we can be warriors for the kingdom. That we can say with with loud voice, not today, Satan. While you used to have me, you no longer have me. Amen. I'm a child of God, and that will never change. So thank you today for our community. Thank you today for the breeze. Thank you today for our food. Thank you today for the needs list. Help us to have a grateful heart. Help us to live a life of gratitude, no matter the circumstances. Help us to fall more in love with you in the next 30 minutes, or however long you're going to talk, than we were when we showed up today. Works. I know your 
And he, know, and he knows our decibels. <laughs> yeah, that started birth. Actually, it starts in the womb. It starts in the womb because you inherit. We're born into Adam, the first Adam, and we inherit our generational curses. But when we get born again, all that stuff goes away. All goes away. Even the effects from the sin that you've done in your life can go away. Y'all know, most of you know our story. And know that my husband smoked a lot of stuff. He smoked cigarettes for 30 years. He smoked anything and everything that he could or shouldn't smoke. And it destroyed his lungs. And he's been suffering with COPD for the past 12 years. Well, he was diagnosed 12 years ago. Three weeks ago, the Lord healed him. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. That's right. 100%. <laughs> Not an ounce of breathing problems in his lungs. Thursday, when he That's went right. to the doctor and they did his little O2 thing, they got mad at me. <laughs> this again. 
against you, that you have abandoned the love that you had. They didn't lose it. They walked away from it. They didn't misplace it. I misplace my stuff all the time. I couldn't find my glasses today, and then I couldn't find my phone. And I know where my keys are, because after 13 years, my husband has trained me to hang them on the hook when I walk through the door, which happens 98 percent of the time. So, uh, they didn't lose Jesus. They walked away from him. They said, Jesus, and then they did this. They said, Jesus, and they said, I'd rather smoke pot. I'd rather do meth. I'd rather be a slave to some addiction. I'd rather be a slave to myself and do what I want to do than serve you. Jesus said, I have this again. You walked away from, you abandoned your first love. Now, we're in Texas. We're in the Bible Belt. We're in the buckle of the Bible Belt. I'm saying. Everybody, as far as you can see, is saved. Because they all know Jesus. They say they do. But we know Jesus. You know Jesus. If somebody's in them and you see the fruit on their tree. If it's an apple tree, what kind of fruit is it going to have? Apples. What kind of juice is inside that apple that came off the apple tree? Belly to belly, he already 
It's Song of Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man ever. And Song of Solomon is a love story, is a um, pretty seedy, pretty seedy book. It's a very seedy. One of the guys oh, in uh, in in the Albert Fat Albert's gang, wasn't it? Rudy, oh, the guy with the guitar. Yeah.
But who knows? But who knows how to talk to a king? Who in the world's ever even met a king? Well, most folks don't even. Me. Most folks don't even know how to talk to a judge. You got to pay somebody to talk to the talk to the I judge for you. Say the wrong. Say the wrong thing. You said ninety days. Right. Imagine talking to a king. Right. And not only a king, but the king. Yep. The king above all kings. The king. Of <laughs> Praise Walking God. Right. And I can love him because he loved me first. And he said, well, I don't even know if I love you. And she said, you don't have to. Because there's nothing that you can do that's going to make me not love you. Nothing. Because you're my son. And when I didn't love God, he still loved me. When, we walked, when I walked away in 1983, 84, when I walked away from the Lord and I said, thank you, but no thank you, I'm going to go do life on my own. I think I got this. Anybody ever said I got this? Famous last word before some kind of destruction was about to happen. He let me walk away. But like a good father, he stood and waited 14 years for me to come back. He let me make my choices. He let me make my messes. Then he let me come back. Then he helped me clean up my mess. He didn't make me clean it up myself. He helped me Praise clean God. it up.
remember how messy I was. I remember how foul and how far away I was from my original design, from the Father's love, from my walk with Him. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction to me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. And in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to pardon and sanctify me. Not only did He let me come home, not only did He clean me up, but He made me right. He made me right the Father. He made me right just in right standing with Him. You can't walk like Jesus did unless you're in right standing. I've heard many people say, well, Jesus did what He did because He was God. No, Jesus did what He did because He walked in right standing with the Father. In right standing with the Father, we can do every single thing Jesus did. In right standing with, with the Father, we should be doing everything Jesus did. People around you are dying and going to hell. We have a job that Intensive on that we're supposed to be focused on listening, watching, listening him, and then doing what he tells us to do. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. So my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. That day's going to be so beautiful. I'm going to get to look into the eyes of the one who did everything for me that I couldn't do. I'm going to get to look into the eyes. I'm going to get to sit at his feet. I'm going to get to give him the rewards of everything that I do here. I don't do what I do here for you, although I love you. I don't bring you clothes or jump in the trunk for you. I bring it because, number one, he called me to, and number two, it brings him glory. And one of these days, for all the rewards that I give for the life that I've lived, I get to put it at his feet. I get to give it to him and say, thank you. Thank you for all that you did for me. Thank you for all those times you saved me. I can't tell you I should be dead. I should be dead. I should be dead. But he saved me because he had a plan and a purpose for my life. And one day he's going to come pick up his bride and we need to be ready. Now, I'd rather you get there with absolutely no rewards than not at all. But what would it be like to show up before the King of Kings with nothing to bring to the King? You know, when um, it arranged marriages and then Bible times and like when, um, when Abraham was getting Jacob a wife and they have a dowry, there's a present that they bring. They bring a present to the dad.